I went to a fast food place the other day and I ordered two large fries, but they gave me like 50 small ones. Folks, welcome to this week in history, and right up front, we want to go ahead and give a shout out to our patrons, Steve Stevens, Clayton Jaimez, the Hayes family, Patrick Freeman, and Mark Penn Griffin. We appreciate the support from our patrons, and we appreciate the support from all of you through liking, sharing, commenting, all that good stuff. But if you want to help out a little bit more and help keep this puppy going, you can check out the link to our Patreon down in the description. Anywho, let's get to it. On December 12th and 627, by Byzantine forces defeated the Sassanid Empire at the Battle of Nineveh, the final battle of the Byzantine-Sassanid War. The Sassanids would fall into civil war afterwards, which weakened them enough for the Islamists to take over. In 1901, Guglielmo Marconi received the first transatlantic radio signal, the letter S in Morse code. Yeah, we covered how to make that, you should already know, at Signal Hill in St. John's, Newfoundland. On December 13th at 1295, Four, Pope Celestine V resigned the papacy after only five months to return to his life as a hermit. It took two years to elect him, and he left after five months. Oh, and by the way, his replacement had him imprisoned in case anyone tried to bring him back, and he ended up dying in prison. In 1937, the city of Nanking fell to the Japanese, after which began what is known as the Nanking Massacre, or the Rape of Nanking. Now, we don't know how many unarmed civilians were slaughtered. Japanese these officials destroyed all those records after they surrendered, but the lowest estimate is 40,000, with most agreeing that it was closer to 300,000. Plus, more than 20,000 women were raped and typically killed afterwards, more often than not being mutilated with a bayonet, you know, down there. Now, Japan still doesn't acknowledge that this or any of the horrible things they did to China actually happened. In fact, a lot of Japanese people are deniers. It's kind of like Holocaust deniers. Those 300,000 Chinese people people apparently just went off on vacation or something. But speaking of messed up things that Japan did during World War II, So, typically, military medics are seen more as observers than active participants. They wore helmets and armbands that made them stick out. They didn't carry weapons. And the rules of war said that you pretty much left them alone. In the Pacific theater of the war, medics had to adapt to Japan not caring if you were armed or not. In fact, their snipers intentionally went for people that were wearing a medic helmet. So, medics had to wear normal helmets, no armband, and had to be armed. The Japanese also figured out that wounded soldiers would yell out medic to get a medic's attention, so they started doing this and killing the medics when they showed up. To fix this, rather than yelling medic, which the Japanese could easily pronounce, they changed it to Tallulah. Yeah, there's a big difference between Tallulah and Tarura. That's not racist, that's history. On December 14th at 1542, Mary, Queen of Scots, became, well, Queen of Scots at the age of one week after the death of her father, James the fifth. On December 15th at 533, Byzantine forces defeated the Vandals at the Battle of Tricamarum, bringing an end to the Vandals' North African Empire. In 1270, after 17 years of siege, 17 years, the garrison of Gurdka surrendered to the Mongols, and yeah, the Mongols would just slaughter them all. On December 16th at 1598, Allied Chinese and Korean forces prevented a Japanese invasion of Korea at the Battle of Noryang, sending the Japanese back to Japan and ending the Imjin War, also known as the Seven Year War, which is not to be confused with. In 1761, during the Seven Years War, yeah, see, it's got an S there. After a four month siege, Russian forces took the Prussian fortress of Kohlberg. However, several weeks later, the Tsarina died and the new Tsar wanted out of the war, so he made peace and ended up giving back all of the lands that Russia had taken including Kohlberg. Talking about fighting for nothing. On December 17th at 546, the Ostrogoths sacked Rome and began to plunder the city. They would move on from the city and actually fail to retake it later on. On December 18th at 1622, Portuguese forces were victorious over the Kingdom of Congo at the Battle of Mbumbi. But this defeat stilled the resolve of the Congonese and they were able to rally and push the Portuguese out of their kingdom. That's what we like to call losing the battle but win in the war. And it looks like that's just gonna about do it for this week, but we'll see you back here next week. Same Squirrel time, same Squirrel channel. Be happy,
be healthy, and y'all come back now, you hear? 